Yeah, what I've noticed, because I've seen some people where they've built followings and they're more about really nice images with their products in the background, but not them or not other people. And then when they flipped it and went more on, oh, hey, I've like, got this new, and they're actually in the videos and stuff. That's when their brands sort of exploded sort of thing. So I think we like, especially since the pandemic, I think people want to feel a connection more than they ever have. Welcome back to this, the Fireside Podcast Syndicate, where everyone in this community has an opportunity to become a guest, learn how to podcast, and we also bring in amazing experts in the industry to help us all grow together. Today, we have a, an amazing guest who is in the community named Clayton Bates. This gentleman is with Inspire Small Business, and he, he helps people with their Shopify sites. You know, he helps build the product-based businesses, build and rebuild their website to convert more visitors into paying customers, which we all want if we're running a store. Wouldn't you agree, Clayton? How you doing? 100%. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm doing good. How about yourself? Oh, fabulous, fabulous. And as you can tell, we are both with different accents here. I'm from the States and Clayton, tell us a little bit about where you're at and what you're doing. Yeah, I'm from Sydney, Australia. Um, so about, if you know the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge, where I'm about 30, 40 minute drive from there. So um, yeah, and I have a business called Inspire Small Business. And like you're saying, we build and rebuild Shopify websites. We also do free audits of people's websites. So we'll actually send over a free video review of us going through your website, giving you tips and suggestions to convert more visitors into paying customers. Now that's incredible. Shopify has <clears> been <throat> around for a while. I remember when it first came out, it's got to be, man, what is it? Well over 10 years now, right? Shopify has been around. Yeah, I've been using it for 10 years this year. So it probably was, I don't know what year it was, but you'd think a couple of years before I started using it at least. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I remember the Shark Tank guys kind of getting involved in that, getting it moving at the beginning. I think it was Damon. Uh, I think he was involved in that. But it, it's grown. It's, it's, you know, it, it's out there, you know, in so many ways. I think it's impressive that you're able to, you know, tweak, get under the hood, like you say, in someone's website and find a way to increase, you know, their revenue. So tell me, tell me a little bit about what your team does. And when someone comes to you and how do you really go into that website and what are there, you know, certain areas that you have found to be an issue on almost every, every person's website that you'd go to? Yeah, there's, there's mainly five. So what a lot of people mess up is like, they don't know how, they don't understand how to structure their homepage. So for example, most websites, 40, 50% of their traffic goes to the homepage first. So they don't really understand why someone's going there or how to structure it. So we restructure the homepage. Uh, the second one is their product page. There's normally three things you want to try to do on your product page, have all the information about the product in an easy way to read and understand, uh, build trust and benefits if you can. Some products don't have benefits, but if you have benefits, that'll be good. Um, the third thing is site navigation. So. Normally, the more traffic, the more products you have, the more important site navigation is. So if you add one product or 100,000 products, obviously 100,000, you're going to have to have really good site navigation. Um, so even like a little thing is like a lot of people don't build out their main menu one way for desktop and a completely different way for mobile. A lot of people use the same menu on, on both devices and you think we browse a website differently on a mobile and a desktop. Uh, the fourth one is they don't add their logo and their colors into the checkout. So probably one <clears throat> little, I don't know if you'd call it frustrating, but in the back end of Shopify, the checkout colors in the template is actually in a different section to the colors. So I think it's something like when people rebrand or change their colors, they, they don't automatically think, oh, my checkout um, needs a new logo and colors in there. Uh, so if there's a disconnect when someone goes to the checkout to pay, and there's like all different colors, different background. It's like puts people off, like five to 20% of people will leave straight away. And then the fifth one is mobile friendly. So most websites get 50 to 90% of their traffic on mobile. So you really have to think about 
uh, mobile phone. And then normally when you get higher, like into like hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, there's like 50 little things that um, people mess up, but they're the five core things that people mess up. If you can get those five things right, you'll make more money for sure. Interesting. So you're just trying to make the flow for the customer seamless, but staying within the same brand colors. So it looks like they're still doing the same journey. Uh, when the colors change, you're seeing a drop off of 20%. Is that kind of how it's going? Into the checkout. Yeah. Five to 20% of people that make it to the checkout. Um, if, if your, if your logo and your colors aren't in there, then yeah, people drop off. It's about that stuff. So just for example, this is how I sort of really started to understand the checkout. Five years ago, someone had one of the best websites I've ever seen that just some someone made themselves. And he's like, I don't know why I'm not getting sales. And I'm going through and a lot of people are giving feedback. And I'm like, this is one of the best sites I've seen someone just build themselves. And I went through the whole sale process and I got right to the end. And his background color for his website was black with orange buttons. And then when we went to the checkout, it was white background, blue buttons and stuff like that. And I said, oh, there's some, it, it's, it looks weird in your checkout when you go there. And he changed it to the same colors as the rest of his website. And he made his first five sales the next day. And I was like, well, this is like, that's what started my brain. Like there's something here. And then I started to do tests and like, that's like a real big thing just up. So <clears throat> yeah, it's incredible. Like I've done a lot of my own research in, you know, marketing that, you know, you get into online, anything, it's all about, you know, being uh, consistent on what you have from A to B, which B being the sales in this case. And, you know, sometimes on people's landing pages, they'll test a tweak in the color, they'll test a tweak in something and they'll see an increase. It's incredible what's grabbing from the mind of the, the client or the customer that's coming on. But uh, what in the 50 different ones, you're going from the five core. Why when someone has a hundred thousand, you know, let's just say a lot, uh, a lot more than the average person, why would there be 50 more? Is that because they are missing some products and not being uh, consistent with things? Or is there something bigger that you're seeing stand out when there's a lot more to, to handle? Maybe I said it wrong, but what I, what I meant is like normally when people are making hundreds of thousands of dollars to millions of dollars, then there's little things that they, they need to they change because at, if someone's making $10 million a year, right? And then someone's making $50,000 a year, all these little tiny ones, one percenters, if you fix them on a $50,000 a year website, they might make $500 extra. Now, 500 compared to 50, it's not really that much, right? But when you get to $10 million, that's like these little tiny things are like hundreds of thousands of dollars, like tens of thousands of dollars. Like um, a lot of it comes down to just being consistent. Like a lot of people aren't very consistent throughout their whole website things like that. And on a lower scale, it doesn't really impact the website so much, but on a higher scale, um, even this is a good example, right? The about page, only one to five people out of a hundred will go to about page, but the type of people that read the whole about page and get to the bottom, they're like super, super highly likely to convert into a customer, right? So if you spend a few hours on your about page, if you're making 50,000 a year, you might, it might mean a thousand or two thousand, three thousand extra, but on like millions of dollars, that's like tens of thousands of dollars extra just because you structured your about page properly. So that's why these little things make a really big the higher your revenue, the more the more these little things make a really big difference. Completely makes sense because when you do have those high revenue companies out there doing anything, even small little nuts and bolts, if they can lower it by a penny on that such a grand scale, that could be a million dollars extra in revenue on an annual basis. So I definitely understand that. When you look at yeah. someone's website, are you guys redoing a whole website or are you just kind of tweaking what they have? Because I know in Shopify, there's a lot of templates that you can utilize, a lot of apps that you can attach. Are there simple, you know, certain go-to things that you guys use? 
we we would very rarely um, update their own template. <clears throat> so normally we'll start fresh on a new template and stuff. Um, at the moment, I think there's two hundred, nearly two hundred theme templates in the theme store, and then there's hundreds of third party ones. I think there's five or six thousand apps. So there's quite a big sort of um, there's a lot basically. Um, we've worked on 600 websites now, so we've actually tested quite a lot of different theme templates. So normally, normally we have our like 10 go-to sort of themes that we'll sort of test. And then if someone comes to us and they're like, I really like the look of this theme and we know it's on a different template that we haven't used, we might test it in that sort of circumstances. So basically the reason why we're picking good themes now is just because we work with 600 people. So we've tested like so many different theme templates and stuff like that. So, but the end, end of the day, like the other person has to look at their website and be happy with it as well. So you could pick the best template that functions and makes the, the most money in the world. But if someone hates their website, it's going to really deter them from growing their business a little bit, I think. That, that's an interesting thought about it because sometimes we think too much about ourselves and what we like and we forget what the client or the consumer or the, the person shopping, really their experience, right? So it's kind of interesting that you're seeing both sides. I uh, can definitely feel the experience that you have in this business because you're looking at not only low level, but high level. And then you're really going into detail about, you know, kind of what you're looking at right into the colors and that and the belt pace, for an example, uh, things that people will overlook and, and not put enough time and effort into. So tell me, what kind of businesses are you have you been helping? Because I know on Shopify, a lot of what I was doing on Shopify was I was getting into the drop shipping and I was learning Facebook ads at the same time because a, a, a website online is is nothing if you don't have traffic going to it, right? So it seemed yeah. like Facebook ads was something I had to learn in order to drive the traffic, in order to convert. But, uh, you know, tell me tell me a little bit about your type of clients that you've been really helping and, and uh, what are you seeing more of? Uh, I think it goes in waves. I've helped, like we've built websites in nearly every niche now. Um, we don't work with dropshippers anymore. So I've, I've built a hundred dropshipping websites. And I think um, five, four years ago, maybe four or five years ago, half my money was from dropshippers, like building dropshipping websites. And it was making me feel depressed to build dropshipping websites. And I, and I was like, half my money is dropshipping. Can I really cut this out? And then when I cut it out and just focused on people who own their own products and sold their own products, my business 5x straight away, probably because I was more passionate about helping people with their own products and things like that. Um, yeah, so yeah, we've worked with heaps of different things. So for example, when the pandemic hit, um, I got like 5,000 requests to make uh, face mask websites. Um, when the last lockdown in, in Sydney happened, I built like 10 home, home food delivery websites sort of thing. So it sort of goes in these waves sort of thing sometimes. Um, yeah, a few years ago, we, we built a lot of candle websites. Um, and then, yeah, it just goes in waves sort of thing. It's just, yeah, it's weird how it happens sometimes. So No, I love so, that. Yeah, I love basically that. Basically, we've done everything nearly. Yeah, you're, you're kind of like part of the innovation. <laughs> so really, you're, you're kind of pandemic proof, in other words, as well, right? Like it doesn't seem like anything's going to shut you down unless the internet totally shuts down, which that's not definitely going to happen, right? It's just going to keep improving anyways. Have, yeah. Has AI come into play any, at all within your business? Uh, it's always something that I'm thinking about, like with AI and stuff. So at the moment, AI can, it can write simple code. Um, it's not very good at writing complex stuff. So a lot of the things that we do, um, that we code into websites and stuff, AI can't really do it. It can't handle, um, I need stuff in this file and this other file and all this sort of stuff. It gets a bit lost, but simple stuff it can. Um, the way I sort of look at it is like, if, for example, copywriting, right? We used to pay a lot of money for copywriting and now we don't because there's AI. But the way I think about it, imagine if you're one of the best copywriters in the world and now you're using AI. Like you're like nearly invincible sort of thing. So I always think you've got to embrace these things. Like 
people were scared of tractors back in the day and look at tractors now like every farm basically has one um so yeah i'm trying to think of it like that i'm trying to embrace the ai and uh just try to make the best websites we can um, yeah, there's, there's there's people at the sorry to cut you off there's people at the moment that are using ai to fully build websites but um yeah they're not very good they're actually <laughs> terrible yeah and that's your expert opinion i love it but yeah. uh Absolutely. I think, you know, the reason I ask is because AI is, AI is new and it is, you know, changing a lot of things. And there is a time when you need it, when you could use it to save time, like you said, with copywriting. Absolutely. Because it's a language based uh, program to really understanding what you're looking at, where your expertise would come into play there because of your experience, your you know, over 600, uh, you know, different things that you've tested and done over the years, like 10 years is a long time. Um, and AI can't take that and look and really, you know, understand the data of what you've done personally, you know, but uh, I know SEO is a big thing with websites. Do you help in regards to that as well? Uh, we just do basic SEO. So we're not like full blown do SEO services and stuff. Um, from what, from most people that I work with have Instagram following. So we try to focus more on people who have Instagram following. So I'd say like 80% of the people we work with, they have a few thousand at least followers on Instagram. Uh, so we mostly build websites that, um, they flow well from Instagram. So they're like more lifestyle type images, things like that. Um, some of our clients are doing well on SEO, but the, the thing is, I, I think building a brand is like more powerful now because you think so a lot of products where we work with people just go back to the candles, for example. Imagine trying to rank page number one, result number one for candle. Like it's basically impossible. Like you, all the companies spending so much money to rank the top of Google. Um, I always think build a brand is like the way to go sort of thing. So. And when you talk yeah. about building a brand, which is a great, great uh, topic, are you are you looking at, um, in a way, connecting with a passion? Because I, 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 I've found over the last few years that a lot of people, if they have something to connect their product with or their their uh, their their business in a sense, where it's where you know the big businesses cannot take it because they're not in that grassroots kind of direction where if someone comes in with a passion and they build a product off that passion, that becomes their, you know, company, you know, direction and path. Is that kind of, you know, what you're seeing or uh, in regards to building a brand and how you would advise someone? Yeah. You have a massive competitive advantage over big companies when you build a brand. It was like, it's pretty rare that the founder is going to be like, oh yeah, I love this pot plant or something like that. Do you know what I mean? And I'm passionate about it. Um, yeah. What I've noticed was I've seen some people where they've built followings and they're more about really nice images with their products in the background, but not them or not other people. And then when they flipped it and went more on, oh, hey, like I've got this news and they're actually in the videos and stuff. That's when their brands have exploded sort of thing. So I think we like, especially since the pandemic, I think people want to feel a connection more than they ever have. So if you can build a connection with your, the people that want to buy your stuff and your community and stuff, there's so many different ways to leverage things. Like uh, one, one thing that I've been thinking about quite a lot lately is one of the most successful businesses I've ever worked with. I'm not going to say their name because I can't really, but basically what they do is they run ads to their product, which is like $30. They break even on their products and then they have programs on the back, back end. So a small program, medium, bigger one, online, one-on-one -on -one coaching, right? And with platforms like school now, imagine you have a brand selling pot plants, for example, and then you can actually funnel those people into school and have this, we all love plants sort of in this school group. We all love podcasts. We all love whatever building community. So I think there's like, there's so much room for like brand stuff, like moving forward sort of thing. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think like you're right, COVID created an isolation um, globally, which blows my mind still. Um, and now the the next direction is personalized branding, personalized um, community, finding a way to connect because we've been so, you know, pushed off. Like sadly, or happily, I never got fully affected by COVID because I lived in red states here in the, in the U.S., but my Canadian family, that whole place was shut down for two years, which I think Australia, you guys were similar, right? Yeah, where I am wasn't that bad, but in Victoria, the next state, that was like one of the most locked down uh, state uh, places in the whole world. So that was like full crazy. Like I know people in Victoria, that was like very bad in Victoria. But I feel lucky when I compare myself to them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, that's our life, right? So tell me, tell me a little bit about your team. How many people you got? Kind of what, what uh, you know, are you, are you the kind of like the ringleader? Like how, how does this all play out in your business? Because Inspire Small Businesses, I think it's a great name. Yeah, so there's five of us. So we have like designers, uh, people that do coding um like admin sort of people stuff like that um yeah i'm just trying to build it i also have like a new business that i'm working on at the moment actually with school inspire agency owners so i actually so it just basically helps agency owners to like yeah inspires agency owners but um the reason i called both of them inspire at the start is i actually read a book called your one word and it's about if you can find a word that resonates with you, that word will most likely resonate with other people. So, for example, inspire, you'd be surprised how many people in their about page have it, the word inspire that work with me, probably 30% or something like that. So <laughs> I think people are drawn to the word. Like, um, so, yeah, you, you find a lot more like-minded people sort of thing. Um, yeah, I think most of my businesses are basically just wanting to inspire the five-year ago version of myself. Like I started to inspire small business five years ago to help the 2014 version of myself that couldn't build a website. And then I've started this new school group to help the five-year ago version of myself that couldn't run an agency. So yeah, it's funny how like, yeah, things like that work out, I think. Well, what I've learned is <clears throat> as we move forward and grow and learn, you are qualified to help your former self. And that's yeah. where people go, I don't know what to do. I don't know I, what's my niche. Well, what have you grown from? Yeah, and that's that. That's your niche right there. Help that former self of you because there's other people doing the same thing. Right. Yeah. So, 100%. I, yeah, so I think it's great what you're doing. I, I love it. Um, tell me, tell everyone kind of where they can find you. Like how can someone get a part of, you know, Clayton's team. Um, so yeah, inspire small business.com is um, my agency. And then Clayton Bates.com is with all the other stuff. Um, and then my YouTube channel is Clayton Bates Shopify expert. So I talk about different stuff with e-commerce and agencies and all different stuff like that. Um, so yeah, they're the places to find me for sure. Awesome. Awesome. And and I was one of those people about five years ago with the drop shipping. <laughs> that was around the time, I think it was 20, 2018, which was around the same time. That the the funny thing is the guy who got me into drop shipping was named Chris Record. And he was the one who introduced me to Sam Ovens. So I got, you know, yeah. I've been around Sam Ovens for about six years now and pri pre, you know, school. And I, I just find him fabulous. Guy definitely knows how to move direction and and follow the wave of where things are going. So he's always someone to really uh, you know keep yourself connected to. And look at yeah. we met, you know, and it's it's great. Um, you know, just understanding that one word too. I I do believe words are powerful. And when you you know, I didn't look at it as one word to that would inspire others. Using the word inspire, I think that's fabulous. But it is true. Words create. Right. And if you can insert one word into someone, it's a seed that's growing. And, you know, in, in a sense, it's building your business, which I think is fabulous. But hey, anything yeah. else you'd like to kind of say um, to the listeners? 
in regards to uh, your full direction? Uh, just, two, just two quick things. Yeah, I follow Sam Oven too. I've done all his courses and stuff. I wouldn't be here without him. So, um, yeah, I definitely appreciate everything that he's done. Um, the other thing as well, with dropshipping, do you know what's funny about – oh, it's not funny, but the most successful dropshipper I've ever worked with, the lady was like 60 years old, maybe, I think, something like that. Um, she had five kids and she, she had kids to feed. She was like, she was hungry. She was, she was like on grinding hard. Like, I think you can, you can make dropshipping work, but a lot of people, a lot of the times is like, they don't have the products there. It's like somewhere else. Like it's so it's easy to get lost and not grind and stuff. But when you've got a really massive wire, uh, some people I've noticed, they just, no matter what, it's going to work. Like they're going to make it work sort of thing, even myself. So sometimes if you're comfortable and things are easy, like it's easy to slide and stuff like that. So when you really need it to happen, that's when a lot of people make it happen, I think. Yeah. You know what? You said something very valuable there, which is really in the mindset, right? And when I started getting into this direction, I was listening to Jim Rohn because I wanted to learn about business. And I didn't realize business was 80% mindset, 20% yeah. skill set, right? And that drive you're talking about is really key. And sometimes people get into these things and they just go, I'll try it. I'll try it. Well, they're not putting that, they're not digging their heels in. They're not making that will within them. They're not, they're, there's nothing driving them. There's no why. Hers, she had five kids to feed. Yeah. And drop shipping isn't easy. You know, looking for yeah. those, like I was doing the, you know, I forget what it's called now, but from China and it was trial and error to find like, at first I wasn't doing their prime thing. So people weren't getting their product for two months. <laughs> so that created yeah. a customer service issue, you know, and sometimes they didn't even get it. So I was like resending, but I was resending at a, a faster rate, which I should have done in the first place, not realizing it. But the reason I got out of that just, to, you know, just to, you know, for, you know, giggles here was because I broke even from Facebook ads to selling. I yep. made five grand. It cost me five grand. But what I'm grateful for is I learned Facebook ads because of it. And it cost me nothing. I got to yep. play with it with Shopify, you know, and and learn and I didn't lose my shirt, <laughs> right? Yeah, a lot of a lot of people don't think of it that way. Like, I think of it as apprenticeship sometimes. Like, my my business only made eight thousand dollars the first year. I nearly went bankrupt. Like, and then I pushed through, and then the next year I made a hundred thousand, and then like whatever. So sometimes I just look at it as apprenticeship. I just paid for apprenticeship basically for the first year. Um, so yeah, sometimes it, it takes that long, a year or two before you can start to make good money from something. So yeah, because you're finally getting your ducks aligned. You you've seen things, you've iterated, you're adjusted, you're 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 focusing on what's working. There's so much into it. And and you're right, it 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 takes time and people seem to quit too soon. Right. And we don't know how many years yeah. it may take. It could take five years. But that grind yeah. is where you're learning, right? Have you seen the meme where the guy's digging for the diamonds and he's like one more hit away from the diamonds and he and he gives up and the other guy keeps going? Yeah, so the other guy saying, buys his diamond mine and gets it within like, you know, <laughs> it just goes through the... Uh, I love that. It's so much truth in it though, right? You know? Yeah, because... well, it happened to a guy in the gold rush, I think. He had a gold mine and he was he was getting gold. And then apparently like the line jumped across or something. Oh, there's some, I can't remember the term for it. Um, and they kept digging and couldn't find gold. And he sold it to someone for nothing, basically. And that guy got an expert and they realized the gold line or however it is had jumped over a little. So they moved the mine over a little bit and then they, the gold line kept going or whatever it's called. I probably wrecked that whole story, but basically, yeah, that's sort of, <laughs> it's sort of similar. That's probably where they got the memory from. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind of like you, you know, getting a coach, getting, you know, kind of like yourself, right? Understanding, you know, you know, he got an expert as you stated, so he was able to use his expertise to kind of align where he needed to go next. 
yeah. that definitely aligns with what you're doing and you know in school and shopify and everything that you know a business really is is you know and a book you know it's grabbing that mentor and helping you really go the right direction and i and that's a great way to end because i think that's kind of how you are that you're out here to help you're out here to you know be of service to share that information of 10 years you know in that one niche but uh hey i want you to have a fabulous rest of your night you are we're on opposite ends here but uh hey i appreciate you being on the show i appreciate you being in the community and uh, I'm looking forward to sharing all this information with everyone. Thank you, Clayton. Uh, Dramas, thanks for having me.